Well, it is now official. The capitulation and pivoting by central banks around the world has finally kicked off this morning, with the Bank of England announcing unlimited bond purchases. Now, this is all coming as British bonds, also known as gilts, have seen their biggest spike up in yields since 1957. And I'll just read you a quick excerpt from the statement from the Bank of England. Were dysfunction in this market to continue or worsen, there would be a material risk to UK financial stability. This would lead to an unwarranted tightening of financial conditions and a reduction of the flow of credit to the real economy. So that certainly does not sound good. And this is, of course, the predictable consequence of the fiat debt-based experiment that central banks around the world have been undertaking for so many decades now. Seems like it's finally beginning to reach its pinnacle. And these purchases of long-term British bonds are going to be on whatever scale necessary. That is how the Bank of England has described it until they have, quote, restored orderly market conditions. And following this announcement, the yields on those British guilds did drop sharply. And now the pound sterling is also trading around an all-time low against the dollar of a dollar six per pound sterling. And considering the nature of this announcement and the nature of this quantitative easing and intervention by the Bank of England, I would not be surprised if in the weeks and months ahead we see the British pound drop below parity with the US dollar. Of course, that will be a temporary development as ultimately the Federal Reserve and other central banks around the world are going to have to follow suit with the Bank of England and intervene in these bond markets. One interesting thing is that we may see central banks embarking on this quantitative easing policy and these unlimited bond purchases while simultaneously adhering to their policy of increasing rate hikes. And this is exactly the type of schizophrenic behavior that you would expect from central banks that find themselves trapped in the terminal phases of a failing fiat debt-based currency experiment. And that's exactly where we are, folks. Now, what does this mean for all of us? Well, it means that central banks are going to be creating a lot more currency. I mean, plain and simple, you know, the Bank of England doesn't have a bunch of pounds to go out and buy these bonds. So all of these purchases will be financed via the printing press. And of course, it's just debt monetization because there's no chance that the Bank of England is going to unwind its balance sheet following these debt purchases, at least not any time in the near future and likely never. In fact, I suspect it is probably a mathematical impossibility for them to unwind these purchases once they are made. Very similar to the situation that the Fed finds itself in now with its proposed program of quantitative tightening. You know, supposedly they're going to be selling treasuries and winding down their balance sheet, but they've been talking about that for some time. And while they have been hiking rates, if you take a look at the latest data on the Fed balance sheet, they have done very little to reduce it so far. And right now the Fed balance sheet is somewhere well north of $8 trillion. And my forecast is that we're going to see $9 trillion and $10 trillion and $11 trillion and $12 trillion on the Fed balance sheet and, and much more as well, far sooner than we are going to see $8 trillion or $7 trillion. I don't think quantitative tightening is going to make any progress. And this move by the Bank of England is just further evidence of that. It shows you how rickety this whole system is. And, you know, in recent videos, I've mentioned that the whole system seems close to the breaking point, And this is just further evidence of that. You know, these are central banks which supposedly are trying to get record inflation under control but you know how are you supposed to fight inflation when you continue to monetize government debt and one of the things that caused those bond yields to spike in this fashion over in the UK was a lot of unfunded tax cuts that the new government has been proposing and plans to implement and of course cutting taxes is a good thing to stimulate the economy but anytime you cut taxes, you need to match that with a reduction in government spending or the measures will have no chance of fighting inflation. Because, of course, if you're not paying for government spending via taxation, there's only one other way to fund it, and that is through inflation. And that's exactly what we are seeing right now as the Bank of England begins to monetize the debt of the UK government. And I expect that this is going to be a trend that we continue to see in the weeks and months ahead, 
what central bank will be the next one to capitulate and uh, you know have to go back into the market and begin unlimited debt purchases well we might see more of that in europe you know we had the european central bank a couple months ago talking about this new tool that they had in place for unlimited debt purchases so you know expect to see much more of this and ultimately it is my firm belief that we will see the fed capitulate and pivot in a very similar manner to the bank of england in the relatively near future and when that happens you know gold and silver especially physical gold and silver are likely to be one of the few safe havens available to investors now one thing i think may also benefit is the producers of gold and silver and if you're looking for some paper assets certainly miners are very inexpensive at the moment and while i have not added to my physical stack on the recent pullback i did just add to some of my positions in the miners picked up some paper assets and you know that is risky it is a lot more speculative than real physical tangible money that you can hold in your hands like this uh, five ounce aztec calendar silver round i got a lot of people in the comments asking what this coin is so this is a five ounce quatamoke aztec calendar round from golden state mint um, but you know those paper assets i did add to some of my positions in those because the miners have gotten so cheap at these levels. I mean, they are literally dirt cheap. Uh, you're paying dirt prices for gold and silver that are in the ground. And, you know, that's not financial advice. I'm not suggesting anybody go out there and buy any stocks or anything like that. Although I will say, again, not financial advice, but anybody who's going into this scenario, uh, this debt meltdown around the world, this environment where central banks are being forced to pivot, if you don't have any physical metals... I wouldn't worry at all about speculative paper assets like mining stock or any other kind of stocks for that matter. I would be more concerned about getting my hands on something that I know will be able to weather the coming economic storm, and that would be physical gold and silver. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are we going to see the Fed be forced to pivot just like the Bank of England in the near future? Are they going to continue to raise interest rates while at the same time going back into the market and buying government debt? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Always love to hear what you have to say. And I do want to say a big thank you to all of you for tuning in. Hope you're all staying safe during these uncertain times. Happy stacking, and I'll catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.